Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo led the first European expedition that explored what is now the west coast of the United States. Cabrillo departed from the port of Navidad, Mexico on June 27, 1542. Three months later, he arrived at what he called a very good enclosed port, which is now known as the San Diego Bay. Historians believe he anchored his flagship, the San Salvador, on Point Loma's east shore, near the land that becomes Cabrillo National Monument. Cabrillo later died during the expedition, but his crew continued on, possibly as far north as Oregon, before severe winter storms forced them back to Mexico. Cabrillo National Monument, established in 1913, remembers Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo's voyage of exploration. It was the first contact between coastal California native tribes and men from Europe. Though the San Salvador stayed only six days in San Diego Harbor, this journey and future Spanish journeys to the area would shape Southern California's complex history. That was an excerpt from the National Park Service's website, uh, website for Cabrillo National Monument, which is where all these videos that you're looking at were taken, a beautiful area in San Diego. Lots of cool exhibits in the visitor center, lots of cool views outside, a cool statue to commemorate Mr. Cabrillo, and also lots of cool interpretive signs about Naval Base San Diego, uh, also known as the 32nd Street Naval Station. It's the second largest surface ship base of the United States Navy, and it is located in San Diego. Naval Base San Diego is the principal home port of the Pacific Fleet, consisting of over 50 ships and over 150 tenant commands. I think tenant commands means different chains of command. The base is composed of 13 piers stretched over 1,600 acres of land and 326 acres of water. The total on-base population is over 24,000 military personnel and over 10,000 civilians. So that information is from Wikipedia. I'm assuming it's largely correct. Of course, you never know when it comes to Wikipedia. But needless to say, San Diego is a very, very, very important uh, home for the United States military. And wherever you go in San Diego, you're kind of always reminded of that. There's always that military heritage that's on display. That is the we use to accurately locate naval targets. Roughly, we know about where the target is because we can see it. But we don't know exactly where it is. You have to point the gun properly. We must know the location of the target in terms of its distance or range and its direction or azimuth as measured from the battery is one of our two desired lines of sight. So not only is San Diego today critical for the defense of the United States, but back in World War II, Point Loma, where Cabrillo National Monument is located, was especially important for the defense of the West Coast because it had a lot of these coastal artillery control stations, these defensive structures that were used to look out into the sea, into the horizon, identify threats, and then neutralize the threat. So basically it would be the Japanese. The Japanese would be the threat. And these defensive structures were pretty well concealed into the hillside, so they were an important part of the United States' West Coast defense in the last World War. There's also a very cool historical lighthouse here at Cabrillo National Monument. I don't think it's in use anymore, but it's a very cool place to check out nonetheless. Uh, there is actually a more modern lighthouse that I think is still in use at the very end of the peninsula, the very southern end of the peninsula. And that is not part of the park. I don't think you can visit there. It does look like it's staffed and it does look like there's people living there or at least people working there. So here's the historical lighthouse. They've got a rain catchment basin. That's very cool because you need to catch rainwater if you're going to drink water, water your vegetable garden. And even though you're surrounded by the Pacific Ocean, lots of water, you can't use it because it's salt water, right? So they did what they could to live a sustainable life here at the lighthouse. Lots of maritime vibes and cool aesthetics inside of the lighthouse and uh, a very cool view out into the Pacific Ocean. Some weather stations, some more government property here, and even some islands in the distance. I don't know if they're part of the Channel Islands, but you can see some islands out in the distance. Lots of people on the 
water though, surfers and people paddleboarding or something and people sailing. Just a very, very, very beautiful area. Here's that lighthouse at the end of the point that looks like it's still in use. Uh, it looks beautiful with the palm trees there in the water, definitely. The waters off of the San Diego coastline and off of the California coastline more generally are one of the richest marine ecosystems in the entire world. And it's because they're relatively cool water, pretty cold water actually, and they're home to these vast kelp forests. And kelp is just seaweed basically, a type of seaweed, and they form these huge uh, forests of seaweed that are home to lots of animals like seals, sea lions, fish, everything, even whales. Um, above ground, the ecosystem here is not as rich. It's like Mediterranean scrub, coastal scrub. It's basically a desert. And although humidity is high, there's very little rainfall here. So it's a lot of desert plants actually. And a lot of the plants you'll see here are not native. They've been introduced. The Civilian Conservation Corps constructed a lot of the infrastructure here at the National Monument. That was one of the New Deal programs of the 1930s. In general, this is a really beautiful area. I like San Diego a lot and I hope you guys can visit. It's not like LA, you know, it's actually clean, it's put together, it's not crazy. So I highly recommend visiting San Diego and Cabrillo National Monument.